Yes, sir. Well, I can assure you that that series of plans will be completed by tonight. Oh, the foundation plan. Well, Brent's correcting those, and they should be completed in a couple of hours. I'll check and call you back. Perhaps I'm talking. Yes, I'll call you later. We need the building foundation plan. Are they ready? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh. What is this dollhouse? Happy Homes. It's a new perspective on home building. Uh, an original idea of my own. Of course, mind you, not merely for business. It's, it's an idea with me also. In the construction of the home lies the solution of some of the world's most poignant problems. Now, if you have a moment to spare, I... I have, and neither have you. On company time, you attend to company work. And see that I get those foundation plans before you leave tonight. Foundation. Carving a career for himself. Look at him, mooning over that singer again. That's my business. Oh, maybe you two would rather be left alone. <laughs> No, you don't. You're too fat already. We are very happy to present Miss Ruth Porter, featured at the Club Little, singing There's No Comparison, accompanied by Jackie and Earl Hatch, two grand persons at two grand pianos. There's no comparison, you're above the crowd, dear. There's no comparison, this thought makes me proud, dear. That's her, There's Ruth Porter, small-time nightclub singer, gets break on the radio. She's not small time. <laughs> what is she then, a, a prima donna in disguise? No She's a nice, quiet, refined girl. I know she is. Oh, I know she is. You've never even seen her. You let David alone. If he says she's a nice, quiet, refined girl, she is, and you mind your own business. Please, Happy, I do want to hear this. Young man, if you took my advice, please, Mortimer, some other time. It's obvious as ABC. Mentally or grand, physically you stand, an octave part, a figure of art, a symphony of... Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sorry to interrupt this program, but we have a special broadcast request from the Radio Service Bureau. The police report a desperate break from the Hopton Penitentiary. Eddie Muller and Ronald Stanton, notorious gangsters, have escaped and are still at large. Stanton was convicted for the recent Barclay Jewel robbery. The jewels, worth a fortune, have never been recovered. All citizens are asked to cooperate with local and state authorities in apprehending the escaped convicts who today fled the state penitentiary. These men are desperate and must be brought into custody. Please report without delay any suspicious characters to your nearest police authorities. There you are, a jewel thief. And who wears jewels? Women, that's who. I bet the poor guy was straight until he got mixed up with some woman. She wants jewelry. So what does he do? He snatches them for her. Look at him now. <laughs> the mastermind at work. It doesn't take any mastermind to tell me that where there's women, there's trouble. I know. Dave doesn't know when he's well off. Falling in love with a voice. If you'd listen to me... <laughs> you... And what's funny about that? How anyone could help listening to you even two blocks away. You talk all the time. David, don't you mind? Dave, Dave, you take a tip from me. Forget this woman. Forget them all and stay happy. Get mixed up with them and you land in a mess of grief. I'm warning you. Women and trouble. Don't you listen to him, David. It's men like him that... It makes women like you. Oh, oh, that's a very funny joke. I heard that when I was a little bit of a girl. Many years ago. Yes, many years ago. <laughs> Going for a walk until you two settle down, if you can settle down in this environment. This household is a perfect example of my argument for happy homes. Don't wait up for me. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Happy Homes Limited is not only a going concern, it is a growing concern. Oh, that's terrible. What is our object? Sooner or later in life, to every man comes the desire to experience the thrill of ownership. Our mission, ladies and gentlemen, is to provide that man with a scientifically adjusted home. Not just a house, but a really happy home. A place where in later life, he can sit and enjoy the fruits of his years of labor happily with his wife, free from care and worry, safe from the dangers of the world. These people can... What? Check it and put it through. Very well, sir. Put that new phony away. It's not new. I just dusted it off. Well, everything looks set. And he pulled the brake in great style. And he sprung the squire with him just like we planned. You know, we're taking a big chance on this Berkeley Jewel proposition. And if anything slips up, well, figure it out for yourselves. You can't miss, Steve, as soon as the cops cool off me and buzz... Special news flash. Louder. We have just been informed that Eddie Muller, one of the escaped convicts in tonight's Hopton Penitentiary break, has been captured. Squire Stanton, his companion, however, is still at large and... It's a bad break, Steve. Yes, but I'm going to wreck the whole works. Eddie could give us a lowdown on the squire and tell us how to handle him. Without Eddie, it's going to be tough. Black and me can handle him okay. No gunplay, Bugsy, until he's right. Sure, boss, but I was only trying to save time by... You're taking orders. According to Eddie, the squire's pretty slippery. What's his real name? Ronald Stanton, Esquire. There ain't no such name. He's pulled some of the biggest jewel jobs in this country. That baby's class. You mean he ain't a mug like me? Okay, boss. I can take it. Did you ever see the squire? No. He's a blank to me. That makes three of us. He's hot. But those Barclay jewels he's got planted away make it worth taking the chance. Just imagine. A hundred thousand dollars. Maybe more. But he'll take handling until I can pry him loose from those jewels. What's the setup now, boss, with Eddie back in stir? But go ahead the same as we planned. You and Bugsy go down to the valley, lay low, until he comes along. That guy fascinates me. I hope he's there. He's supposed to be there, and he'll be there. You fix these clothes, Bugsy? All set and ready to wear. You plant the money I gave you? In the pants pocket. All right, get going. You drive. Get him out of his prison clothes and hang around for a couple of hours and then bring him in. And watch your step. And Bugsy, don't try to think. Let Gus do it. Sure, boss. I always let Gus do the thinking. Blackie and me do the brainy work. Still on our tail. They act like they know us. No, it looks like they're just cruising. Do you want Black and me to shoot that with them? No. No? That's what I said. This is the bluff. I'll cross the bridge and circle back. Maybe we can shake them off. Suppose those cops are still snooping around when we get back. Then what? And we don't stop. You'll have to throw the bundle to him. He'll get to the club okay. There he is.
Mr. Moran. All right, Ruth, come on in. You're always welcome here. Can I offer you a drink? No, I just came in on business. And... Well, <laughs> that's no good reason for not being sociable, is it? Surely your business isn't so important you can't talk it over sitting down. Now, what is it you want? It's about my job. Yeah. Should be nothing to worry about on that score. Your voice is the best we've ever had at the Club Little. Customers all like you. And what's more important, I like you. Thank you, but you see, Mr. Moran... All right, Ruth. How much more money do you want? Oh, I didn't come here for a raise. I want to give you my notice. I'm quitting. I told you I'd pay you more money. You're paying me enough. Maybe you don't like the way you're being treated around here. Everybody's treating me fine. I don't want to go with any hard feelings. Maybe I don't like your quitting. Maybe I don't like some of the things going on around here. It's not my business. I just stumbled onto it. But I don't want any part of it. Don't be a fool, Ruth. What do you care? It's not hurting you. And it won't, because I'm leaving when my week's up. Now, listen, Ruth. I know you're a nice girl, and I know you're smart. I've been crazy about you ever since you came to this place. I've got lots of money, and a hundred thousand dollars to walk into this place with my name on it in a few hours. Half of it is yours. You just... Your number in five minutes, Miss Porter. One, sir? Yes, only one. This way, please. Special dinner, sir? Oh. A ham sandwich and a cup of coffee, please. A ham sandwich and a cup of coffee. Ham sandwich and coffee, yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen. Jackie and Earl Hatch will accompany Miss Ruth Porter, who brings us Winter in My Heart. Mom! 
that be all, sir? Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. I didn't expect him to have any brains, but I gave you credit for a few. I tell you, boss, the road was thick with coppers. We couldn't stop. You couldn't stop the thing either, could you? Maybe you guys can tell me what's going to stop the squire from coming down here, keeping those jewels and skipping to China with them. Don't worry, Chief. The squire will show up all right, all right. Why? On account of I got a hunch. Ah, uh, shut up. That's just what I was going to do. <laughs> That picture's really too flattering. Oh, I say, you really like it. I'm so glad. Of course, it doesn't really do you justice. Are you an artist? Oh, no, no. No, but I'm an architect. Oh, you draw pictures of houses spring up. <laughs> well, no. I draw pictures of houses don't exactly spring up. <laughs> <laughs> I say, uh, would you, uh, could you sit down just for a moment, of course? All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Look, can I get something for you? Something to eat or something to drink? Oh, no, thank you. Nothing at all. Really? Absolutely nothing? Well, that ham sandwich looks awfully good. Oh, uh, can I order you one? No, but I would like some of yours. Oh, but please. Please, do have it. Oh, no. 50-50 or nothing. <laughs> you know, I can't imagine a glamorous girl like you being interested in a thing like ham sandwich. The simple things in life that are really important that make for happiness. Do you really believe that? Do you believe that the most important thing in life is a happy home? You see, Miss Porter, I have an original idea. Happy Homes Limited. It's a business, not only for profit, but founded upon an ideal. An ideal to provide every individual man and with a home. Not just a home, but a happy home. Oh, that's a wonderful thought. Do you realize the scientific importance of environment? Do you realize that most friction in Hobe is caused by poor arrangements, inadequate accommodation, and a general inconvenient endeavor? Visualize the home scientifically right for two people, a separate end for the man, and for the woman, large wardrobes, and all the latest labor-saving devices to make housework easier. Oh, those are good ideas. But this is my favorite idea. No guest room. Just the house for us. For us? Have you made me a partner already? Oh, well, I, I, I didn't mean well, what I meant was... Aren't you afraid you're going to pull that sleeve out? Oh, oh well, you see, it, it isn't my suit. No. No, no, it was thrown at me. No, really, I'm not crazy. It was thrown at me. Oh, I may be crazy. Can you explain it to me? Oh, <laughs> maybe you can explain it to me. You see, I left my house tonight. Oh, Brent, David Brent. How do you do? <laughs> it's so stupid of me not to tell you before. But... You were just leaving your house, Mr. Brent. Yes, yes. Well, I've been walking for about half an hour. He has some nerve. Taking up a table of Ruth time on a ham sandwich and a cup of coffee. Shall I give him his check to hurry him up? Go ahead. And when I dodged back into the bushes and opened the package, I found this suit. Do you have a check, sir? Oh, yeah, thank you. Of course, I was very glad because it was very cold, you see. But when I put my hand in my trouser pocket, I found all these bills. Look at this. I'm taking this into Mr. Moran. Keep an eye on him. You actually saw the squire? Yeah, we saw him right at the spot. The mayor out front just passed with counterfeit. Well, you're up to your old tricks again, eh? What do you mean, boss? I gave you orders to stop passing the queer. We can't afford to take chances. Gee, boss, I never... Quit stalling. I know your phonies. They're so bad a blind man could tell them. Well, I'm waiting. Honest, I ain't passed any queer except, well, the money you told me to put in the jeans we threw Squire, and I didn't think he'd need real dough on kind of 
Sim, is how we were. You put the phonies and the jeans you threw Squire? Yeah, I'm sorry. Honest, I... Shut up. Man that passed us go up? No, he's still out front. He's sitting at a table with Ruth. With Ruth? I think I'd like to talk to those two. Don't you realize those clothes were meant for the man they call the squire, the convict that escaped tonight? Yes, I know, but... And the clothes were thrown to the squire's friends. You've got to get right down to the police. You can give them a perfect description of what the convict's wearing. Yes, I know. I thought of that. But then, you see, I came in here and I met you and... I'll be here tomorrow night. So will I. I'll go right down to police headquarters now. Going someplace? Yes, I am. Wouldn't you like to come into my office, Squire? I am Steve Moran. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Moran? I'm delighted, but you see, I'm in rather a hurry. Now, perhaps some other time, if you don't mind. Miss Porter, I'll go right away. Good night. You've got to hurry. Yes, You're yes. hurrying the wrong way. That way. Drop them. You can't. I'm surprised a lady like you doesn't know enough to keep her nose clean. I resent your high-handed methods. Pushing a person around from room to room comes under the heading of kidnapping. Take it easy, Squire. I'm not a Squire. This is all some mistake. And you're making it. You ought to know better than to double-cross me. You're too much of a lady to take my spit. You've got to get it all. I'm telling you there's nothing wrong except in your mind. You're right. This picture looks to me like a perfect frame. You grab the squire, he grabs off 200 grand in ice, and you're sitting pretty. What am I supposed to do? Whistle Yankee Doodle out of the window? If you'll let me get a word in edgewise, I'll straighten out everything for you. are the one that needs straightening out. No cheap little songs like a gonna chisel me. Mr. Steve Moran, you can't talk to her like that. You don't mean her. Why? Well, that's nonsense. He's telling you the truth. Yes? He's not the squire. He's trying to slip one over, boss. He's not the squire any more than Bugsy over there is. And where did he get that suit? It was thrown. I tell you, he's not the squire. He, he, his name is... Name slip your memory? Ronald Stanton Esquire. My name's Dave Brent. That's it, Dave Brent. Can't think so fast for yourself, huh? Don't be a fool, squire. Don't sell out to a woman just because she's got a pretty face and a come-hither look. Why, this dame's on the level like Pike's Peak. You can't talk about her like that. Now, look a here, Squire. Yes. Don't fall for the first doll that comes along. There's lots of pretty girls. Why, that dame's not worth double-crossing anybody for. I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. But if you're insinuating anything against Miss Porter... I'm I... only trying to put you straight. Look how she died to double-cross me. Why, when you get those jewels out of hiding and she gets her hands on them, she'll kiss you goodbye. I know a babe like that once. She took everything I had, except the filling out of my teeth. You're doing a lot of talking, Mr. Steve and Mr. Bug, but you're saying nothing. If you could get it through your head that I'm neither a squire, nor a duke, nor a king, but just plain Dave Brent, perhaps we could get out of here. Maybe he's telling the truth, boss. Mister, maybe you're not the squire. In which case, we owe you an apology for inconveniencing you. Oh, that's all right. Anyone can make a mistake. But you put me in an awful spot. This little deal isn't exactly something I'd want everybody, especially the police, to know about. Oh, don't you worry about that. I won't tell a soul. Oh, no, live and let live is my motto. For your sake, I wish it were mine. But in my business, we can't take a chance. We've got to be sure. Dead sure. Well, I don't think I quite know what you're driving at. You can't mean... That Wait a minute. He'll talk. Sit down. You'd better tell them the truth. The truth? The whole truth? About everything? Yes, everything. I represent Happy Homes Limited, a business founded upon an ideal and inspired 
by the crying necessity of the average man. The average man and woman of today, living their lives together, sharing their sorrows and their joys, their sickness and their health. They have no yachts in which to sail the seven seas. They have no luxurious disease, but they can have that in a gilded castle, a home, a real home. Not the musty, narrow little apartments amid the dirt and the din of the city. Not some ugly little four-walled box stifling their very existence, but a real home and a happy home. And that, gentlemen, that is the purpose, the object, the undying mission and ideal of Happy Homes Limited. Will I stop him now? I can't figure his act. I'll let him finish. Happy Homes Limited is not only a going concern, it is a growing concern. But mind you, it's not in business solely for the sake of profit, but in order to answer that desire in every man's heart for the thrill of ownership. Not only of a home, but a happy home. And a happy home is not an accident. It is a scientific possibility within our control today. It has been said that a man's home is his castle. And these homes will be veritable castles of contentment to the happy people living in them. You may perhaps wonder, gentlemen, why I stress the point of environment so strongly. Yeah, why? I don't have to explain to you, gentlemen, the importance of environment. Look at you. Look at your unhappy faces, stamped as they are with sorrow and with care. Now, if you had the right environment in your home, would you want to leave your wives at night and go out into a smoky nightclub and play poker with the boys? Yes. We'd go out and play poker. No, Mr. Barnes. And would a wife object to cooking and to work in the home where every modern convenience made her labors easier? And again, I hardly need tell you the importance of keeping our children off the streets, away from bad surroundings, and the evils that tempt them so often into a later life of crime. As I said earlier, Happy Homes Limited is a combination of business and ideal. Not only do we provide happy futures for many people, but the possibilities of financial profit to ourselves is enormous. I can assure you, gentlemen, with the soundest conviction, that for the smallest possible investment, you can make more money in one year from this project than from all the nightclubs in the city. Now, gentlemen, how much money are you investing? How am I doing? Terrific. Well, have you finished? Yes, thank you. Quite. We're wasting our time. Dave, now you have put your foot in it. Well, after all, you told me to tell them everything. And if I do say so myself, I thought I was very convincing. I meant you should tell them you were the squire. To stall the time. Oh. Idea. Let her alone. Now, now, Gus is just taking the lady for a little walk. Maybe she has something interesting to say. All right, Steve Moran. You win. I am the squire. I told you that I'd do it. Well, I guess it was foolish of me to try and fool a smart guy like you. <laughs> you know how it is, though. I met the girl, and I sort of thought that perhaps if I didn't have to split with you, she might fall for me. So we planned to double-cross you and run away together. That's exactly what I said before. Exactly. No hard feelings, I hope. Oh, of course not. Now we can get down to business. You mean you're willing to invest in my... Where are the jewels? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, the, the, the jewels. <laughs> of course, the jewels. Yes, you, you know, want to know where the jewels are. Uh, let me think. Well? Now I remember. They're hidden in an old deserted house. Some people say it's haunted, but I don't believe in ghosts. Are you interested in the supernatural? 
Oh, no, I see by your faces that you're not. You're more interested in the jewels, aren't you? Go on. It's not very far. You go down the state highway. And after the first billboard, but before you come to the second billboard, you turn right. Then about two miles down, there's a little gas station. You turn right again. Then you take the next turning to the right, and then to the right, and then left. About half a mile, and there's the house for the jewels. Maybe I'd better draw you a plan. Thank you. Well, I can't show you where the jewels are without any material. A pencil, paper, ruler. Get busy. What kind of an office is this? Now you are terrific. You're telling me. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Now. <laughs> Mr. Bugs. Well, of course, that's wrong. I know it's wrong. Has anyone got an eraser? Sure. No, a rubber eraser. An X marks the spot where the jewels are hidden. Now, in order to avoid any possible confusion, I'd better show you exactly how and where I hid the jewels. Let me see. I entered the room through a window about there. I tiptoed across the room, holding the jewels in my, uh, my left or my right. It was my right. All right, you be the jewel. And slowly but surely, I got over to this door. Very carefully. I turned the handle, flung it open, and dashed. Pardon me. Hello. Didn't we meet earlier in the evening? Why, we must have. He's got my clothes on. Permit me. I'm Ronald Stanton. How'd you do? My name's David Brent. Oh, uh, I present to Mr. Stanton, Miss Porter. Charm. I hope you'll excuse us, but... Oh, but you can't go until I apologize for my impetuous actions early in the evening. The emergency, the situation. Oh, yes, yes, quite. Yes. I feel quite badly about taking your clothes, but... Uh, uh, I know, the emergency. Yes. Exactly. Ah, but I see that you have another suit. The one intended for me, no doubt. Not a bad fit. No, no, it's a little bit big. Badly tailored. You have been inconvenienced. Uh, how do you like yours on me? What are they talking about? You know, it's strange what a difference a change of clothing can make to identities. Mr. Moran all evening has been mistaking me for you. How annoying. I hope he understands the true situation now. Oh, yes, yes, I think he does. You see, he was telling the truth. Be quiet. Please excuse my mentioning it, but, you know, this coat happens to be... Not another word. I understand. I don't blame you a bit. It is a lovely garment. Thank you. Uh, if you'll allow me. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Well, it seems to be a little heavier than... Oh, pardon me. I should be glad to return the scarf also, but... Uh, it would be embarrassing. <laughs> yes, it certainly would be. Please, please keep it with my compliments. Now, if you'll pardon me, but uh, you understand uh, business, sordid money matters. Well, gentlemen, now that you're all straightened out and you've found the right man, I, I think we'll be getting along. Thank you so much. We've had a very interesting evening. Goodbye. Lock him up in the other room.
Well, I've certainly got you into a fine mess. It isn't your fault any more than mine. Just one of those things. Yes, I know, but... I didn't want our meeting to be just one of those things. Are you crying? No, I'm not crying. You're not afraid, are you? Oh, that's what you think. I'm just talking so that you won't hear my teeth chattering. I suppose people have been in worse predicaments. Much worse. And I am in good company. I'm so glad you think that. So wait until I can get here without undue risk. Are you ready to go after the jewels now? At your service. And what about my friend and the young lady? They know too much. We'll bring them along. I'll take care of them later. Bring them out, Bugsy. Unfortunate, but uh, unavoidable. Well, look, why don't you suggest it to him? There's no use, Dave. I know this Steve Moran. Yes, but it seems to me that if a man... All right, you two pigeons. Let's go. It is rather stuffy in here. It'd be nice to get some fresh air. We're taking you two on a nice long ride out in the country where you'll get plenty of fresh air. If either of you two make a sound while we're walking out, well, just don't try it. You shouldn't feel bad about this. When this is all over, you'll probably crash the front page of every newspaper in the country. You might even get your picture in the road of Gavir. Sure lucky. I've been trying for years, and I ain't never been in one yet. Some around here. Yes, and safer than any vault. All right, let's get the jewels and get out of here. The jewels are buried in the other room. All right, Bugsy, time up. Okay, boss. Dave, I'm afraid. Don't worry, darling. Everything's going to be all right. Pipe down, you two. Get over there. Comics reported in your district. That is all. Face the wall. I said no funny business. Now wiggle out of that. Light the lamp, Gus. find our jewels uh, buried under that trap door. All right, Gus, get busy. Well, I get them all 
tied up nice and cool. Grab a shovel. Depends what you call all right. Oh. Why, what did he hit me with? His fist. Yeah, I know. What was in it? Oh, you poor boy. Does your head hurt? Does my head hurt? Of course it hurts. Well, you don't have to bark at me. After all, it's your own fault, you know. Why didn't you wait till Bugsy was out of here before pulling out of the slip knot? Oh, I'm sorry. I just couldn't. Of course, I don't have to tell you that if you'd been smart, we'd have been out of here by this time. Yes, I know, but when I saw that great water buffalo start messing you about, it, I just got mad, that's all. Well, why didn't you say so? I wish there was some way that I could start this evening differently. Why, because you met me? Oh, Ruth. You know that's not what I mean. Meeting you is the loveliest thing that's ever happened to me. I shall never forget it as long as I live. Which won't be very long, I'm afraid. You wouldn't age gracefully anyhow. How would you have made the most beautiful grandmother? You know, Dave, I've been thinking about Happy Homes Limited. There could be a fireplace in the bedroom. Make it nice and cozy. Yes, it would be cozy, wouldn't it? Then we might finish off one of the rooms with a sort of dull antique style, like this old barn. Very interesting. Look, Ruth. An axe. Please put it down and step back. This isn't funny, Squire. Not for you, it isn't. You were too anxious, so I knew I couldn't trust you. Back against the wall, gentlemen. If you please. Take it easy, boys. This may be the gang. a favor getting me out of stir. So now I'll return the courtesy. I won't drill you. Look behind you. You can't fool me with that old trick. Get back around, drill you. He's got the jewels. Grab him. There he goes. Stop, Stop him. Stop him. Stop Stop him. him. Here's the barn, boys. Close in and watch your step. All right, boys. The show's over. Take him out. Come on, let's go. Come on, you.
Look it over. Come on out. Now let me do all the talking. Very fine work, officer. Just a minute. I didn't know there was a dame mixed up with this gang. Oh, but obviously you don't get the idea. Oh, don't I, though? A very good idea, too. Yes, but officer, this young lady and myself were simply trying to take the jewels away from the gang. Ask her, she'll tell you. You're doing all the talking. Oh, we simply wanted to get them back to their rightful owner. And that's just what you're gonna do. And just in case you get bashful before the owner gets a chance to thank you, I'm gonna lock you both up. Sure now, officer, and would you be after arresting a boy and his girl? Sure, and why wouldn't I be? Me mother was an old Clancy, and me father was an old Kluski. Could a girl with so much Irish in her tell anything but the truth to a man who by his face must at least be an O'Shaughnessy? Sure, you're a smart girl to me knowing all that. But my name's Berkovich. Come on, you two, move. But officer, you can't do this. Oh, uh, can I? Are you asleep? What's the matter? I just wanted to know if you're asleep. Well, you can stop wondering. I was. I'm sorry if I disturbed you. I didn't think you'd object to my company. It's not up to me to object to the company one finds in jail. I do object to having you awaken me to find out if I'm asleep. I suppose it means nothing to you that I haven't closed an eye. When that sister you've been speaking about comes and identifies us, that will mean something to me. She should have been here hours ago. Well, if she doesn't get here soon, I'm going to get a lawyer and have him habeas my corpus out of here. For Pete's sake, stop walking. Don't worry, I ain't going far. I've been thinking. The change should be good for you. I ain't no mastermind. But the last time I was in the Hooskow, I was in the federal penitentiary. Ah, oh, pipe down. A swell federal penitentiary with private rooms. I said to shut up. And a smart guy like you, all you can get is a dormitory in a cheap jail like this. You'll wear out your shoe leather pacing up and down like that. You certainly have a lovely disposition this morning. Oh, well. This place gets on my nerves. On both our nerves. If I hadn't been so darn smart with that sergeant. Well, here we are. Yeah, here we are. Not much like Happy Homes Limited, is it? Oh, at least it has its point. No one can get in. Oh, no? <laughs> oh, this has been an exciting experience. Experience. It's been an event. And this is the hangover. The morning after. Oh, no. No, the morning after is only when you've done something you're sorry for. Ruth, this may seem a funny time and a funny place. But there's something awfully important I must ask you. Yes? Would you... Do you think you could... Yes. You mean you... You really mean that... Here's my hand on it. Oh, Ruth, please say that again. This may be leap year, but I think you'd better finish what you started. 
I love you, Ruth. I love you more than anything in the world. We call him a dumb yap. What does he get? A beautiful babe. What do we get? A kick in the pants. The young lady to see you, sir. Oh, that must be my sister. Thank you. Thanks very much. Please, please, will you marry me? But definitely. Don't let me disturb you. Oh, <laughs> How do you like our little home? Home? Ah, now you're touching on one of my favorite subjects. We're very interested in homes just now. Of course, it's my theory that the home environment is the most important thing in life. I could only talk like that guy. When I finish this stretch, I'm going to take electrocution lessons. 